It has been said that in Twilight Struggle, you need to know the cards well in order to play well. Well, we're going to take you through every card one by one, and we're going to help you become a master at Twilight Struggle. This is Legendary Tactics. The Korean War was an important event in the Cold War, and it can be just as pivotal in a game of Twilight Struggle as the battle for Asian domination progresses through the early war turns. Here's how both sides can make the best use of this card. This card is a great threat, effectively making the US hesitate about playing influence into South Korea until it has passed. It definitely loses value as the game goes on, however, as Japan and possibly Taiwan fall under US influence, thereby making it a long odds rule for success. Strangely, the nature of the Korean War card means that it's usually worth taking South Korea by influence play instead of by this event, as it removes the luck element. A 4-ops card will allow you to do this outright. You may consider it a reasonable play and a fair deal that using the US-Japan Mutual Defense Pact card for the 4-ops essentially gives you the fair trade of South Korea for Japan. It's a decent way to mitigate the event and keep the balance in Asia. If the US then decides to compete with you on influence there, the threat of the Korean War card remains hanging over their head. The US player risks losing all of their ops with a lucky die roll for the USSR. So in many cases, the US will likely just concede South Korea to you. If you decide to trigger the event, the two victory points and the two military ops are a welcome bonus to your victory roll, even if you might only be flipping one US influence. For the US player, it's usually best to let this event happen as soon as you possibly can. The card works best for the USSR as a threat, so the faster you can remove it, the better. And, if you trigger it early in the game and you happen to win the Korean War event, then you can use the two ops to safely take control of South Korea. If you lose the Korean War event, you can still put the two influence in there and get ahead in the race for control. Either way, it's likely better played later on in your turn, such as the last action round. There usually isn't time or ops to build up South Korea's neighbors deliberately in the early war to offset that die roll. Certainly, you can build up those countries as the game progresses, but the best you can hope for in the meantime is that the USSR triggers the US-Japan Mutual Defense Pact card before you can get to the Korean War card. Also, prematurely piling ops into Taiwan and Japan will signal that you have the Korean War card and will likely result in the USSR just using the China card to take control of it outright. It might be worth putting one op into South Korea just so the USSR can't take control of the country with a single four op play. But do so understanding the risks involved. This might cause the Soviet player to play the China card to go over the top and to gain control of South Korea that way. If that happens in turn one, that can be great for the US as it would allow the American player to hold on to decolonization or de-Stalinization until after the turn three reshuffle and give them the China card, which would allow them to go over the top in Thailand or Pakistan if the USSR doesn't over control them. If the Korean War card ends up being held until after the turn three reshuffle, then you're probably safe to play into South Korea for control, as it's not a likely SALT negotiations card candidate and may not turn up in time to make any difference at all, assuming the die roll involved is even favorable to the USSR. Along that same line, there is a school of thought that says that if you get the card in hand as the US player, it's actually a great idea to play into South Korea for control and space the Korean War card after the turn three reshuffle basically guaranteeing that you're not going to see this card 
again until after turn seven. There is some merit to that, and it certainly seems better if the USSR places any influence in South Korea before the event triggers, but it obviously does depend on the circumstances, such as whether you do not have another candidate for the space race that turn. You can also go for broke and place influence in South Korea with the threat of the Korean War hanging over your head. The only time this might make sense is if Asia is about to be scored and or if you control Japan and or Taiwan already, mitigating the die roll. It could be an even more attractive play with a Formosan resolution event in effect. So in summary, you're likely going to see one of three situations in South Korea. Either the USSR takes it outright with ops, or the war happens and the US wins, and the US uses the ops on the Korean War card to take control of South Korea. Or the war happens and the US loses and spends the ops to make it two to one likely resulting in the USSR spending a big card to gain control. Other variations are possible, of course, but this is likely what you will see. So in summary, for the USSR, play it for ops to keep it as a threat for as long as it makes sense. And for the US, either play it as soon as you can to get it over with, or play into South Korea with influence and space the Korean War card so that you don't see it until after turn 7. This has been an in-depth examination of the Korean War card in Twilight Struggle. I hope it was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And once again, this is NATO with Legendary Tactics. See you next time.